And bro, I thought Brother Tommy was going to get me again, but he got close, but not right on the mark. If you'll turn in 2 Chronicles chapter number 17, 17, 2 Chronicles 17. When you find your place, we'll stand if you're willing and able for the reading of God's Word. 2 Chronicles chapter number 17. And uh, we're just going to start reading verse number 1. And uh, if you find your place, won't you just say amen. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim which Asa his father had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balaam, but sought to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all of Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents and he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Uh, Brother James, will you pray for us tonight? Amen. 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 You can be seated. Thank you, Brother James. And as Brother Tommy was reading about Asa there, this is uh, Jehovah, Jehoshaphat, his son, uh, uh, King Asa's son there. And uh, we pick up here in, the, uh, in chapter 17. Uh, uh, Asa has went off the scene. He's died. And uh, now Jehovah, Jehoshaphat has, uh, uh, has stepped up and is uh, reigning as king of Judah. And uh, we pick up here in the second great revival uh, uh, of God's people here. And uh, I, I'm glad for those revivals that we read of because it shows us how we are to be uh, when revival comes around. You know what uh, happened when revival was happening in Israel? Uh, uh, they had a time of peace. And uh, uh, in the time, uh, if they had uh, re a revival, uh, they had a time of prosperity. And can I say to you, we can again have prosperity and we can have peace in our country, but it's going to take revival of God before we ever get there. It's not going to take the right uh, uh, president in office. It's not going to take the right person as the House Speaker. Uh, it's not going to take more money being in our pockets. It's going to take a move of God before we ever uh, uh, are to see a true uh, revival and uh, a time of peace. And uh, I, I think the days of uh, peace and prosperity for America are, uh, are, are about over with, uh, and as the Bible reads. Uh, uh, but can I say to you, God's not done with us yet, so let's not give up and let's look forward uh, to revival. And can I say to you, that revival might start right here in this little church. And it might spill into these streets, and then it might spill into our county, and then it might spill over, and then a, and a, before we even know it, uh, a, a revival has happened in our nation. But can I say to you, it starts right here. I can't control what they're doing down the road at the next church. I can't control what they're doing uh, uh, up the road at the next church. Can I say to you, all we can do is what we're doing right here. And uh, we need to look for revival. Uh, and I want us to see a couple of things uh, that happened and what, uh, what he did, Jehoshaphat did, uh, and what, uh, what set off revival. Now, as I said, there was a first revival under his father Asa. But this revival here was a much greater revival than his father seen. And can I say to you, there's been revivals come and gone, but there might be another revival that happened. I've been in revival here at this church, and they've been great. But can I say to you, there can be another one, and it can be greater, and we can see more things come out of it uh, But if we'll uh, adhere to the God. But in verse uh, number 1, 
Uh, I want you to notice he strengthens himself against uh, 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 against uh, uh, Israel there. Now the the, the kingdoms are split, uh, split up. We have uh, uh, the ten tribes there, and they're all split up. Uh, and, and but he's uh, Judah here. He's the king of Judah, and he's reigning over it. And he sets uh, now Asa his father had trouble with King uh, uh, Basha. Uh, now, uh, when this is, uh, as I said, when the when the kingdoms were split up, and uh, Basha had set up idol worship, and uh, the and uh, so there was a separation uh, between the kingdoms here uh, because uh, one was uh, idol worshiping, one was trying to worship the true God in the right way. And can I say to you, there's churches up and down these roads that they're uh, they're not preaching the gospel as it's presented to us. Uh, what they're doing is a form of idol worship. They're in it for entertainment purposes, and uh, uh, there is a sense of it. Uh, uh, but can I say to you, we're ever going to get real revival, it's going to be from the throne of God in heaven. And it's not going to be idol worship, can I say to you, when you look up uh, and you get on the TV and uh, you see these Grammys and these Emmys and stuff like that, you know the Emmys uh, and the Golden Globes, they have these images, you know what, they're uh, idol worship. They're literally uh, the images uh, of, uh, of idol worship uh, from uh, the days uh, of Babylon. Or, uh, if you look into it, it's scary what they're doing right before our eyes. Uh, it uh, literally scares me to death uh, uh, that it's right before our eyes and people don't realize what they're up against. Uh, but, it, but here Jehoshaphat, what he did uh, is he uh, strengthened himself against that. And can I say to you, we need to strengthen ourselves against what the devil's putting out. Uh, and these uh, uh, in our TVs and in our phones and uh, in, in these hills and hollers because the devil, uh, uh, he would love nothing more than to see uh, uh, the true uh, church of God be put out uh, but, uh, over to idol worship. And, but can I say to you, we think uh, that idol worship only happened over in the Old Testament. Can I say to you, it's still going on today. And uh, it's not that we sit up and we have uh, these altars and stuff and we're uh, worshiping that, but I, uh, an idol can be anything you put before God. Anything you, hey, uh, can I say to you, there's some people so addicted to Facebook, they become idol worshipers to Facebook. There's people that uh, they're idol worshiper to their job. There's people that's idol worshiper to a woman or a man. Uh, uh, you, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot uh, put anything over God, and but at least it become an idol in your life. And you know what uh, that uh, Jehoshaphat did? He strengthened himself. He put up some things in the way so that uh, that this idol worship wouldn't spill into his. And can I say to you? Uh, people say, Jacob, why are you so uh, uh, narrow-minded uh, when we had this little fall festival? Uh, uh, why wouldn't you do the Halloween theme? And uh, not to, and uh, Because uh, I don't want that stuff in here, uh, and I don't want it in our kids' lives, and I don't mean nothing bad. I don't think anybody ever uh, me intended anything bad from it, but you know what? As a leader uh, uh, from behind this pulpit, I have to answer it to God for what I do. And I, I have to do it uh, uh, the way that I think the Bible. And I just, uh, the way, I want to be more, uh, uh, it's always better uh, uh, to be uh, careful uh, than uh, uh, to be a little more reserved and, and, and not play into things uh, than to be, uh, uh, for, to see some things come out and hurt you in the end. Can I say to you, nobody ever got hurt uh, playing it careful. The Bible says we're to stay away from the very appearance of evil. And uh, they say, Jacob, uh, uh, why don't you drink? Uh, why don't you do these things? Well, first of all, it's wrong in the Bible. And, and it's an evil thing. And I'm to stay away from those things. And it's appearance of evil. Uh, what, Jacob, why don't you go out uh, and do certain things? Uh, because uh, I, it would look very bad for the preacher to be in certain places. And it's, I'm to stay away from the very appearance of evil. And guess what? You are too. Hey, if it looks like, if somebody could question it and it could be a stumbling block before you, you better stay away from it. Uh, if you wouldn't be proud of it uh, to bring me in to, uh, to bring in uh, uh, the pastor to your house and you got it at your house, if you'd have to hide it back somewhere and uh, you wouldn't do it in front of me, I just probably wouldn't do it. You know why? Because my mom and dad always told me, if you can't do it in front of the preacher, you probably ought not to be doing it. Uh, you know why? Because, uh, uh, because there's guilt comes in your life. If you've got to hide something from a preacher, if that guilt's there, I'm telling you, it's probably wrong in your life. We're to stay away from these. And Jehoshaphat, he got rid of these things. He uh, protected himself. He put up, uh, he put up uh, a strength in himself. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah. Uh, but I, I want you to see in verse number 3, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. 
The Lord was with Jehoshaphat, and I'm so glad that we got a God that's with us. Hey, uh, it, it looks like sometimes uh, uh, when we turn on the TV and when, we, uh, when we're down a number on, on Sunday night and Wednesday night and we think, Lord, uh, what, uh, why, why ain't we seen it grow? You know what? Uh, can I say to you, there's more with us as long as God's with us than there is against us. Hey, there is a, a God in heaven and He outnumbers every opponent. He outnumbers every force of Satan. Uh, uh, if He's with us, and I'm glad uh, Jehoshaphat here, he uh, walked with God, but the Lord was with him, and I'm glad. I, I've been seeing some things in this church that lets me know that God's with us. Eh? And what well, Bible don't it say something about if God's for you, who can be against you? Uh, who can? Uh, but if God is with you, and I'm glad uh, that we got a God with us. I'm glad we serve a mighty God. Hey, uh, we serve a jealous God. We serve a, a God. God that created everything uh, uh, from the heavens to the earth. And He created me and you. Uh, and uh, you know what? If you get saved, He's with you. He ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to forsake you. And that gives, me, uh, that gives me peace at mind at night. When I lay my head on my pillow uh, at night, as that song says, you know what? I don't worry about it because I know God is with me. And if there's not peace in your mind when you lay your head on your pillow uh, at night about where your soul might end up, you ought to get saved before the day's over with. You ought to get saved before this service uh, lets out uh, because there is peace uh, knowing God is with you, but He'll never be with you until you accept Him as Savior. But first of all, the Lord was Jehoshaphat, and why was He with him? First of all, He walked in the ways of David before David's sin. Uh, see there? Uh, and it said, And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because He walked in the first ways of His father David. And He's talking about David before David uh, David laid with Bathsheba. He's talking about uh, uh, that little, uh, that little uh, shepherd boy that was out there and he's guarding his sheep. He's talking about uh, that little uh, that boy that ran out there on the field and, and he slew the giant. He's talking about that boy that was an uh, uh, armor bearer uh, for uh, King Saul. He's talking about uh, uh, that boy that played uh, uh, the musical instrument uh, for Saul. He's talking about the one that was anointed king over Israel. He's talking about the one that sought after God's own heart. He's talking about the one that wrote Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's talking about that. You know why? But he, said, he didn't walk like David when David started getting in a sinful way. And you know what? A lot of times all we remember David for is his sin. But can I say to you, David did some, he's the greatest still reverenced as the greatest king to ever come out of Israel. And can I say to you, you might have made a mess of your life, uh, but if you're saved by God's grace, uh, can I say to you today, when you die, uh, as long as you're with God, you know what they'll say? They was a, a saved person. Made it to heaven. That's all that matters. Uh, at the end of the day, you could have made a mess of it, like Brother Mike said, for 30 years or, or however. And you know what? Uh, after that day, he got saved uh, Glory to God, He got on the right side of things. And uh, it does me well uh, uh, that you can make a mess of things and God can make something out of it. Uh, but He walked in the ways of David. He walked like David. You know what David was? He was a, God, a man after God's own heart. But it don't mean that in the sense that we mean. It means that he was continually seeking after God's heart. He wanted the will of God. And uh, uh, if you want God to move in your life and uh, work through you and uh, you want to feel the Spirit of God in your life, you know what? You're going to be after God's will and God's heart. You're going to be after uh, what God wants for you. You know, oftentimes we want what we want. You know what I want a lot? I want Jacob's way a lot, Brother Joe. You know what Jacob's way wants? Uh, uh, Jacob's way uh, uh, wants, uh, uh, he wants uh, uh, certain things uh, uh, that the flesh desires. But you know what? God's way is different than my way. I'm to be after God's will, to God's heart. But he sought, uh, he walked in the ways of David before his sin. But second of all, uh, it said, and he sought not unto Balaam. Now, as you know, Balaam is an idol worship, a, a fake god, a false god, and he sought not after it. And uh, can I say to you, you ought not to be seeking after things in this world. You ought to be seeking after God, the things of God. You know, uh, you say, oh, Brother Jacob, why do we have so many events for all these kids? And why do we do so many things? You know why? Because I want to set up something where they're seeking after God and His people. Uh, you know what, uh, uh, if we don't give these kids and, and people something to do, they're going to find something to do out in this world. 
And you know what? It ain't going to be good, but if, I can, if we can have a game night and a bonfire and, or just go out and roast a marshmallow and have a time uh, uh, of worship uh, uh, and a good time and uh, fun and faith in the Lord, uh, I'll do it every Friday night if that's what it takes to keep them out of the world. You know why? Uh, because the world's got everything to offer them. We are to offer them everything God's got to offer them. And you know what? God's got far more to offer them than the world does. But He sought not after Balaam. And then it goes on. And he said, uh, and, but sought to the Lord God of his father. We ought to be seeking after God. And uh, then uh, th- uh, fourth of all, he walked in the commandments. He said, and he walked in his commandments. Uh, and we ought to be walking in the will of God. Uh, uh, we no, we don't live under the Old Testament no more, but you know what? It's to be a, 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 school, a, a schoolmaster for us. We're to live and abide by the, old, uh, by the commandments uh, of the Old Testament. And and we are to be walking in the good way, and walking in God's way is a good way. But then, uh, fifth of all, he walked not after popularity. Uh, and then he, it says, uh, and, and he walked in the commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Now, at that time, uh, out of worship was the most popular thing you could be doing. Uh, out of worship uh, was the biggest and best thing uh, uh, that the world was doing. And, uh, and can I say to you, and we're not going to win a popularity contest serving God like we do. We're not going to win a popularity contest serving God like we do. And you know why that is? It's because the world wants something that's pleasing unto them. Uh, idol worship is pleasing unto them. And I, I still can't figure it out. Why in the world, uh, uh, Brother Joe, would I take a, a bunch of gold and uh, make it into a calf and, uh, and to say, oh, you great calf. Uh, you know what, that calf, it ain't got ears to hear. It ain't got eyes to see. Uh, uh, it ain't got no, It can't do nothing for me. All it can do uh, is what I want it to do. And you know what an idol will do? It will let you do whatever you want to. God in heaven won't let you do everything that you want to. Uh, he'll, uh, he'll make you walk in those commandments. And, yeah, uh, and that's why people are out of worship, because they can make up any uh, uh, immorality, uh, and, uh, and they can make up any uh, ungodly thing, and they say, well, my idol says I can do it. You know why? Because they're pleasing under their own self. But God won't let you do those things. God will make you walk in the right way. God will make you uh, walk uh, in the way. But, uh, and you say, uh, preacher, uh, uh, why uh, are we seeing a country that's falling away from God? You know why? Because the Bible says that's going to happen. The Bible says that it's going to happen. And uh, you know why? Because it don't talk about that it's going to be popular to serve God the way we do. It, it, it actually says we'll be persecuted for it. And uh, it says uh, uh, some other things, uh, uh, but uh, in the end of it, we're not going to be popular, but I praise God. Uh, there's going to be a day that it's going to be worth it after all. I, as my papa uh, tried to sing, I'm a winner either way. I, I, I don't care uh, if anybody knows me in this world. I don't care uh, uh, if, I, if I win a big competition uh, with my local government down here. I tell you, I, don't, I could care less if they ever put my name in the newspaper. You know why? Because there's a God in heaven that knows my name. And I know His name, and, we are, and He is mine, and I am His, and I'm glad for it tonight. Uh, but then, God blesses him. After he does all these things, he walks after God, uh, uh, as David did before his sin. He sought not after Balaam. He sought the Lord. He walked in, com- in the commandments. He walked not after popularity. Then God blesses him. If we're ever going to see God bless us, it's going to come after we walk in the commandments, after we do these things that Jehoshaphat does. But and I want you to notice that in verse number 6 there, he said, And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and the groves out of Judah. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent to his princes, even to uh, Ben-Hel and uh, Obadiah and Zechariah and to Nethel, uh, Nethanel, and uh, Micaiah uh, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, even uh, uh, Shemaiah and uh, Nathaniel. Uh, these words, uh, they, get, uh, they get tough. You try to get up here and say them. Uh, Zebediah and Ashel and uh, uh, Shema, uh, however you say that. Uh, but he, and he with uh, uh, Elishma and Joel, a priest, and he taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. You know what uh, Jehoshaphat did? He took the preachers and he sent them out to teach the Word of God. You know how we see revival? is we hear the Word of God preached in our lives. Hey, you better be getting the Word of God preached in your life every day. Hey, I only get you for about four hours a week. 
uh, and I don't uh, and uh, I only get uh, I only do about thirty minutes of a sermon uh, in those four, uh, so uh, really I only get you for about two hours. You better be getting the word of God in your life every day. And uh, the, but that he sent out uh, uh, these preachers. He sends out priests, but that's uh, our uh, country folk word for preacher. And they started telling the people and teaching them about the word of God. And, uh, and I'm telling you, uh, I'm glad for some preachers that go up and down these hills and holler preaching. It does my heart good uh, to hear some old man of God get up in a pulpit, open a, ble- a black leather back Bible, and uh, just preach the Word of God, uh, and preach it in the right way, and don't preach it on opinion. Preach what the Bible says. Hey, it does my heart uh, uh, to, uh, to see some bug-eyed preachers uh, spitting and spatting and, uh, and uh, expounding on the Word of God. Uh, it does my heart some good, but I want us to notice just a a few things and uh, we'll be on our way. His heart was lifted up there in verse number uh, 6 and he said, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Can I say to you tonight, first of all, it lifts my heart to see God using somebody uh, testify in a service. Hey, it does my heart some good uh, uh, when an old saint of God they, uh, say, I just want to thank the Lord for what He's done in my life. I want to thank Him for saving me. Hey, that does my heart some good. Uh, you know what? It lifts my heart. Uh, and you know why? Because that's a sense of revival when people start uh, testifying. When people start getting up and a hooping and a hollering and a shouting in the Spirit of God, it does lifts my heart up. Uh, because uh, uh, that's when they, uh, uh, the Lord is stirring in them. The God is uh, uh, using them, and uh, there is something uh, in their spirit that makes them want to testify of God's goodness. Hey, can I say to you, there's nothing that lifts my heart better uh, than to hear uh, uh, God's people uh, uh, talking about what He's done in their lives. Hey, can I say to you, a testimony uh, that you might give might be the, the testimony in between a person uh, going to hell and a person not. You say, hey, Brother Jacob, how can that be? Can I say to you, God can use your testimony to save others. Uh, there's been many, uh, uh, you say, Brother Jacob, how is it so? Hey, uh, uh, there's been many of these preachers that we've talked about and, uh, and we've set examples before, and people have been saved uh, because of a testimony. It that lifts my heart up. Uh, but then second of all, it lifts my heart to see God's people praise Him. It lifts my heart to see people praise Him. When them little saints of God, they just start lifting them hands. They say, God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for it. Uh, and I, I'm glad uh, to see the praise of, of God's people. And you know what? Around here, we've been seeing some praise happening. You know what? There's more praise uh, out of you. Hey, hey, God's done more than what I've seen you praising Him uh, for. I promise. He's been better than good to me, as the song says. I, uh, when I think about what He, uh, uh, he gave me that little girl back there, and she says, da 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 hey. That right there, that ought to make a person shout because that's mine, but you know what? It come from God. It come from God. I, hey, that may, it lifts my heart up. I, I, the other night, uh, I got up about uh, 4.30 to go to work and uh, she woke up uh, and uh, she uh, looked at me and she said, I love you. Just as plain as day. But then I got to thinking, how does that affect us in, a, in the Lord? Sometimes when, if my little girl, a year and a month old, can, uh, just a little over a year, she can wake up at 4.30 and she sees her daddy, she says, I love you. It does my heart good when some people of God's... Hey, we're the children of God, ain't we? As the last time I checked, we just got up and said, God, I love you. Hey, I, you know what? Uh, a relationship ain't much uh, uh, if, uh, if you don't communicate uh, uh, the love on both sides. Hey, God so loved you. Hey, I can read all day long about how God loved you. But you know what it'd be good for you to do every once in a while? Say, God, I love you. God, I love you. Hey, I thank God. Uh, uh, you just get up and say, I love you. You know what? That was the first thing on her mind was I love my daddy. And that ought to be the first thing. And I can take, oh man, I could preach on that for an hour. But that ought to be the first thing on your mind when you wake up is, God, I love you. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for blessing me. Uh, but it lifts my heart to see God's people praise Him. But and then third of all, it lifts my heart to see people's, God's people praying to Him. You say, Brother Jacob, we do a lot of praying around here. Well, we don't even hardly cut it. We don't hardly even cut it. You say, Brother Jacob, we pray when we open the service. We pray right before the preach and we pray. We pray. 
Can I say to you, that's the only way that we're ever going to see revival come in this church is getting on an altar and pray and say, well, Brother Jacob, I can pray in my seat just as good as I can on that altar. I say, that's not so. I didn't used to think that much about it when I was a kid uh, until I started uh, studying about an altar and what it means to God and how it represents you. Uh, do you think that God would have Abraham build an altar to go pray and, uh, and sacrifice uh, to the Lord uh, if it wasn't a special place for him? Hey, do you think that it wouldn't? Uh, uh, do you think that God uh, uh, would uh, ask us uh, to pray without ceasing if He didn't uh, in, uh, and emphasize the importance of praying? Jehoshaphat, uh, you know what he did? He got his heart lifted up because the Lord started blessing him. And you know what? I look around here and he's starting to bless us a little bit. He ain't a dried up uh, uh, spirit around here no more. There's a sweet spirit of God moving amongst his people. And I've got something to praise him for. And I've got something to pray about. You know what? Uh, and I've come to find out this altar ain't just an altar of getting right. A lot of people don't want to go to the altar and pray because they think that somebody's going to look at them and say, well, they're praying for forgiveness. It's not so. This altar is an altar of worship. This is where you lay down and you say, God... And, and uh, you know what? When you get on your hands and knees, you're saying, I subject myself to you, God. You say, I'm getting in full submission. And you get on that altar and you open your lips and you start praying outwardly. And you know what? Uh, I'm glad that I can pray. And I know there's importance in secret prayer too. And I, I don't mean anything. And I don't mean that we should pray to be seen. But I mean that we uh, should openly be proud to pray and worship to a God in heaven. He said uh, if we'd be ashamed of Him, He'd be ashamed of us. And I'm not ashamed of that to get on an altar and say, Lord, I love you. And I thank you for what you've done for me. But I, I, I want us to, uh, just to uh, take away tonight that it lifted up, or, uh, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. You know what? The only way that it's possible that we've seen what God's been doing around here is that God moved amongst us. God has moved amongst us. You know what? Uh, Jehoshaphat here, he started seeing a revival. Uh, because he started, uh, uh, because he lived in God's way. He walked after God and he sought after God. But he didn't just stop there. He didn't just stop there. He sent out preachers to preach the word. And you know what? God blessed him more uh, uh, in that uh, second revival than he did in his daddy's revival. And there has been revivals come and gone that our moms and dads and our grandpas and grandpas had been a part of but there could be a greater revival happen in this church. You know what? Uh, uh, your old preacher up here, he's been praying hard about revival. I hope you have been too. I've been seeking the Lord what, uh, what we should be doing, who we should get in here, right? when should we do it? You know what? Because I want, as Jehoshaphat seen a revival, I want to see it happen in our church. I want to see, uh, I want to see people saved, but you know what? More importantly, uh, uh, or uh, not more importantly, but it, just as equal as he, as much as I want to see people saved, I want to see God's people getting the help that they need. Revival is for the church. Revival is for the church. And uh, Jehoshaphat, he's seen a revival for his people. And because of the things that he walked after God, and he searched after God, he was able to see revival. But you know what? He didn't just stop there. He, uh, he, uh, he got to be able to do a lot of things for the Lord. Uh, but uh, uh, can I say to you, we can do a lot of things for the Lord if we'll seek after Him. If we'll do these things, if we'll walk in the ways of David before his sin, if, he, if we'll seek uh, not after our Balaam, if we'll uh, seek after the Lord, walk in His commandments, walk not after popularity, but I'm glad tonight it lifts my heart to see God's people happy. You know what? There's been a time in here where I've seen God's people not happy. You know what, uh, yeah, and uh, it wasn't a certain person or a certain things. You know what, it just wasn't right. There was something not right. And uh, because I tell you, uh, if, it was, uh, uh, if it was one church member uh, that caused all of it, uh, uh, we would never have a, a good service. Because uh, if it was uh, one preacher that, that did it, you'd never have a preacher. Uh, but can I say to you, it just, the Lord didn't bless uh, at one time, but He's blessing now. And He can continue to bless uh, just as he did for Jehoshaphat. You know what? Uh, uh, and I, I don't say it to embarrass people, but you know what? It blesses my heart. And if I can, Miss Donna, you bless my heart, Miss Donna. You know what? She hadn't been to church in a while, and then she started coming. And you know what? She's been as faithful as anybody in here. I'm not giving her just any special praise. But you know what? It lifts my heart to see that happening. But you know what? I see her on her face praying to God. You know what? Because she's seeking after the Lord and His will. 
And that, that we are to take a lesson out of that. We can have that in our lives. We can have that zeal about us. But we've got to be seeking after God and His will first. And I praise the Lord for it. And I, but things that lift, uh, uh, and uh, if the title of tonight's message, uh, the things of God lift my heart. It lifts my heart when we come in here and sing an old song of Zion. It lifts my heart when I hear a song of praise. But it, you know what? It lifts my heart the most when I see God's people pray, uh, praying to Him. If ever head bowed, ever eyes closed, Father, we thank You and praise You for another day of life. I thank You, God, for saving me. I thank You, though, God, that You've lifted my heart today and You lift it every day. God, Lord, it'd be easy uh, uh, to let the things of the world discourage us, but Lord, I ask You, Lord, to help us to lift our hearts. Help us, Lord, to get in the spirit of revival. God, Lord, that we look to You in Your understanding. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.